If you remember the last van build, we had technically one and a half offices. And the half is because my space that I was working wasn't really an office. It was more like a video conferencing zone. Since that last van, our jobs have completely shifted and now we kind of require two fully equipped office spaces to make sure that we're both able to be productive on the road. I don't know if I should say the lagoon table. We'll say it, we'll say it, okay. We are not buying a lagoon table. This is a very notorious kind of like table mounting system within the van life community and a lot of van builders and van lifers use this. Yeah, the lagoon table is very much like a standard now. They're gonna hate me. Yeah, later in the video. Sadly enough, it won't actually work for the demands that we have. One of which is for the passenger side to have an office that is fully functional as we are driving so we can get work done really quickly and easily on those long drive days. It's just in case somebody breaks in. So we don't always have to be thinking, do we have laptops exposed before going shopping? Most van builders install lagoon tables wrong. So this week's goal is to create two offices that can kind of like hide and house both our laptops Cables, chargers, mouse, keyboard, trackpad. What else do you need for a workspace? Headphones, dongle, all that stuff. And yeah, I just really want it to work. <laughs> This needs to be a good hinge, you know why? Mm. Because it's supposed to work from the other side too. Look. That's Bring it true, back yeah, in. That's nice. That would be super cool. It's just that getting it around the around the seat? Seat, yeah. This to be done. The passenger side office, like the passenger door table is always the biggest struggle when it comes to these yeah? demands. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to have the same good conditions from the facing forward and facing back yeah. because that adjustment based on the seat look I can go much higher and I can go lower that's the thing that I can uh, maybe adjust the height with the seat not really with the with the table we have five demands less than 30 seconds to set up start to finish must mount in three separate spots throughout the van needs to be big enough for both a laptop and a mouse has to be lightweight yet sturdy I'm not dealing with any Tilton. And then the dimensions need to fit both of us so we can both use this working space very comfortably. Phase one, create the arm and the leg for the swivel table. How did I think it's okay to use such a thin wall, small diameter, aluminum tubing for lagoon table? Something that you lean on. <laughs> that would bend like crazy. I think it started in a store that I thought I'm gonna take much thicker wall and much bigger diameter for this purpose. And that was the biggest they had, so <laughs> square one, kind of. Phase two, create the mount that will hold the table to the arm and the leg. Why would you ever build a lagoon table that's been invented already, right? Why would you be reinventing the wheel, right? That's exactly. With lagoon table. Well, there's a simple reason. We actually have multiple reasons. First, I didn't like that you're limited by the length of the arm. So overall limited radius you can be, uh, you know, swiveling with that. Second reason is that the base that is attached to the table from the bottom is big, it's high, and then it increases that extra knob that pushes in the arm so the whole deal 
with moving that away becomes really difficult because you have this much space sticking out of there. So we purposely made the smallest possible thing and it actually sits on a pin on that arm and it's always fun to be practicing <laughs> stainless steel welding and also learn new things. We like that. That's why we have the workshop here. To make custom stuff. Pavel. Mm. No, oh, oh, never mind, like this. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so excited about this. So, so excited. This is definitely a regret of mine. It's, uh, I don't know why I didn't realize holding the whole sheet together that it was heavier than I wanted. This is, this is minimum, this is three mil and this is just a small tube. This is not much weight. This is pretty lightweight actually. But the fact that this is double plywood bugs my mind and I have two options. I can cut it again, use this as a template and uh, have only one layer and then pretty much Cut this little rectangular shape on an angle 45 degrees like a pyramid so I have double material for this mount or I can make a template and just pretty much router out this whole material away so we end up with the thick edges and lightweight material. After some first tests, I decided to router some material out from below of this table. It's not really for weight saving purposes of a whole van. It's more like having less of a leverage on this whole mechanism. And it's something um, when it feels just right enough. And this just somehow did not feel just right. That was pretty nasty job, <laughs> but luckily vacuuming that was not as bad. And then I'm laminating the edges first and then the whole surface. It goes pretty fast at this point. The whole bottom, I'm just roughly going with a body kit, uh, sanding lighter and spray painting black. Voila! So at this point, we've completed the arm and leg of the sand, the tabletop bracket, and the tabletop itself. But there's still a fair amount to go, which includes installing and creating the mounts that go by the side door, the mounts that go up at the dashboard, and then the entirety of the driver's office unit. Ain't no telling how far they'll go. Freaked her out. Hey, -oh. how'd you get in here even? Uh, Kat, let me in. I'm mm. just here to give you a teeny bit of a heads Listen, up. Listen, Tara, we don't have to do this every video. Every now and then's fine. Yeah, no. Let's make it quick because I'm ready to leave. Just wanted to tell you that the entire van life community, everybody watching, is just gonna really hate you after you publish what? this video. So why? Because you're kind of missing the point of it all. You know, the whole purpose of van life is to be in nature and on an adventure and you you want to be sitting on your computer all day like get an apartment man you think people are going to be mad at me for working online it's like you're going off 
grid and like power wise you're off grid, but then you're online. So you're kind of still on the grid. So you're a poser. My last name is in Bezos. So we do have to keep working. Just pause right there. Do you really think making videos is work? <laughs> <laughs> These videos that you've been making feels like it's your I job. Mean, we own and operate an e-bike business too. It's, and then we have a website. Like there's a lot of fun stuff that we love to work on. Hopefully we'll be doing meetups. I'd love to be making more videos per week. You know, we have a lot of, like, it's all exciting. It's good. Uh, no, I'm just laughing at the thought of you spending eight hours a day inside of a car working and then another eight hours sleeping. So you're like 16 hours a day inside of a camper. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how often we're gonna be working. We haven't even moved in yet. But it's still like you're doing two workspaces. Like, do you need to like split a tabletop, be on the bed, sit in the grass with the ants and the bugs? But even if we were only working 25 hours a week, I don't wanna be physically uncomfortable on my laptop for 25 hours each week. The whole purpose of van life is to reject societal expectations and like completely move away from mainstream modernization. The whole need for an office is not even about like the work being more enjoyable, it's about being physically comfortable. If you wanna be a van lifer, you need to throw your laptop into the river and put a flower in your dreadlock. I don't need to put flowers in my dreadlocks because there's already sawdust in my dreadlocks and it's just one and dread. Open both the back doors of the van and put your feet closest to the camera lens and you're like this and don't show your face but show your butt and look out the window at the waves and find serenity that is van life hashtag van life they're not mutually exclusive it's not like to enjoy the outdoors you have to be anti-work so two offices let's just hope you don't get up in front of the whole world on the internet <laughs> you're so distracting i've literally been sweeping a circle i'm just standing it's okay i'm out uh also, another heads up, this one's uh, free, free of charge. Last one was $25, but this one's free. Uh, you stink. Take a shower. You smell like sawdust and cat. <laughs> she's right. Phase four, maybe, probably, have mounts made for the dashboard so who's ever in the passenger seat can work as we drive. Pavel welding masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> Ale to je tak tuhý, že tady, když se to zamče teďka v té spodní pozici, tak je z toho úplně brutální, ty jo, dráp. Co tam ještě není? Tady? Ještě tady můžeme dát ten jeden. No, a já si myslím, že to je zbytečný. Toto je jenom plast, tam byste musel vypodkládat mezi tím něčím tak širokým. Ať ne nestahujeme dva plasty tady tak sobě. A to za to ani nestojí, to je fakt tak brutálně tuhý, ty v konstrukci, že... Nemám obavu. Spíš toto. To hned, protože bez toho je to fond mrtvý. This is the front facing desk and it's time to actually test it out and see if I could work on this while we drive. Suspension is obviously something we're considering. We need to get a good suspension so this is nice and plausible. Oh, I can do this. And I just move my, wow. 
What if I just like edit from here all the time? Oh no, the season is over. Done. Such a good tomatoes. They were really good. There was a lot of snacking. That was a nice daily treat. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a scarecrow. <laughs> that was just sad. Time to go. So I'm not exaggerating when I say that Lottie and I went back and forth like quite a bit if it was even worth making this because lagoon tables are like so known, right? And trusted. And we actually use them when we were in the States. But to kind of explain why we didn't do it, I need to demonstrate on the finalized product. So here's the finalized table. I'm obsessed. <laughs> okay, so a little rationale, reasoning, whatever else. So what we've noticed um, from different campsites and meeting people on the road and even watching a few videos of people kind of giving instructions on how to install these lagoon tables is a lot of people install them wrong. And they install it wrong because they don't take into account the levering issue. I need to get another kind of armrest for the side so I don't put all of my weight on the very end of this table. But you see a lot of people who are dealing with their tables like this because they end up mounting their bracket somewhere here to try to like extend the table even further and to have even more range of motion. And then they end up like not being able to put any pressure on their table itself. The brackets on the lagoon table are pretty big. They're like this big. Having that much surface area kind of casually available is less common than you think. The bracket when we were in the States had to be mounted all the way down here. So it literally went all the way up, fully extended, and then all the way here. And it was just impossible to balance. So if you also want a lagoon table on the passenger side as we do, you're kind of forced to have the large bracket all the way down at the bottom and therefore you have less control over the height of the table itself. Our brackets are much smaller and they can be higher so you don't have as much of this for us, the cost probably broke even in some ways because of the multiple days and Pavel's help and everything else. But this end, this whole setup, the same multiple brackets, we need three different mounts um, and that's all extra pieces to the normal price tag plus taxes and shipping, which is 18% and then shipping overseas, we likely would have paid around $600 for just our table mounts, not even the tabletop, which is a lot of money. Lottie would say this is not part of the de debate, but the debate I always have is we've spent so much on equipment here and tools and welders and just the time and energy to acquire those skills that it's almost a shame to not use them and just spend $600 on somebody else's tools, time and skills and not even get exactly what you need or what you want to be sacrificing that extra five to 10 centimeters. The thing about this table that the lagoon is unable to kind of match is the arm length. So the arm on the lagoon, I want to say it's like 35 and we went for something longer. And, and the reason why we made ours longer is because really for my feet to be on the ground, I'm kind of more diagonal than straight here. If we were to mount it any differently to kind of help extend, extend the arm, the whole table would be like this. It did kind of feel like reinventing the wheel, but for our specifications and being able to decide the exact arm and height length directly impacted the front the most. This is also lighter, it's smaller, and it's easier to store. There's little to no assembly. You can keep it mounted. When I turn my chair around, it can be mounted along the backside of the seat, or it can just live at the very front, just mounted and flush with like the dashboard. It is really sturdy. Like I'm not worried about this at all which is really nice to be able to type, to be able to lean, to be able to eat. Um, we didn't have that same experience with the lagoons when we've not only tried them in RVs that we've rented in the past, but also in the US, like the lagoon just really didn't work to our benefit and storing it without completely disassembling it was a really big pain in the butt. So we had to like find a, a random spot to keep this massive L. foldable desk we had before was pretty good. We were able to have chargers already plugged in in a, in a outlets and just fold everything and cover everything and it was a nice spot for Milena traveling too. Mm. 
This time it doesn't work because we have window here. Swivel would be nice, but because we're gonna have a couch here, it's kind of always, you know, in a way blocking that person, then it's in a way here. It's like, what do we do with it? So the only design solution we sorted out for this particular purpose is this hiding desk. Psh, slide in in a slot. Whole goal is for it to kind of be right above this heater, not go anywhere past where our feet are. So that leaves this whole space open for the couch and everything else. See this one? That's what we're cutting now. Pavel, our saving grace here, fixing the RGB that was acting up last week. Nice continuation. Thank you, honey. Are you enjoying my filmmaking? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my proof of concept where I have the diesel outtake to blow on my feet. And then I have just a simple slot with a pin, stopper, folds out, and then this divider uh, holds it as a lever. And that's how I can be using my desk. And when I'm done, it slides back in. Still have no idea how to attach this thing here. This looks like a rivets or some kind of a brackets to the pillar here. Who knows? And then it opens up. All of this is going to be laminated, obviously. And, uh, and then we are supposed to have a big curved screen here. All on a linear rail. And then it should be in the monitor, should be uh, swiveling between both of us and rotation, distance, everything adjustable. So this is pretty much only for the keyboard and a mouse. Like Star Trek, being on a terminal. Can you show the, the, uh, how your arm can fit inside the unit to reach any storage? That, that's that curve? Oh yeah, that's this little curve. That's supposed to be when I have the desk folded, I can still reach in and grab my mouse or, or keys or wallet maybe or chapstick and then when you're done you can just hide this thing and walk away there is no swivel nothing in a in a way i like it plus we're gonna have probably another swivel mount by this couch do you know this hustle like before you start driving or before you leave the van it's like, did I close the fridge or did I move that away that would obviously fall? Or did I hide a laptop so anybody, if they break in, they see them? So all of these micro decisions we are always trying to eliminate by keeping things kind of hidden. So we take advantage of this box and we try to keep it as a dock for both laptops and also to be immediately a safe. So I have these slots uh, routered in that are gonna be postured so the laptops can slide on them and then laptop slides down plugs straight to the external USB dock and and to the charger and then a little lid covers it and that lid's gonna form a little bit of a computer glasses shelf and a wallet and a mouse and all of these little accessories always hidden and out of the eyes just in case somebody breaks in so we don't always have to be thinking do we have laptops exposed before going shopping or do we have them in a safe they're always stored in a safe
Same principle we've done multiple times that we just sprayed with a contact glue, same with the fabric and nicely roll and fill in the spaces. And then I'm gonna make the distance between them and laptop pretty much is gonna slide in and sits exactly in a positioned uh, dock extension and also the charger. Pretty, pretty cool. Now I'm playing with a, with a cooling it because it has an outtake here for the fans. So I did a bit of a play with a routering out. I'm still not sure how to do it exactly. That's why this project is not done for this week. But hey, you should see how it ends up in the following week's videos.